Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today, in Chapter 7, we're going to be talking in this section about writing a simple web server in Node.js. Remember, the purpose of this is that when we use the Python web server, it allows us to serve up our JSON file to our application, and that is great, but we couldn't update that listing. And so we want a little bit more control on our back end so we can do other things, security, and be able to update that listing of um, tasks that we fetch from the server. And of course, if we have a centralized server, multiple users can fetch from the same thing and we could potentially start thinking now about sharing um, you know, tasks with our friends and so on. So let's jump into today's section. First things we wanna do is ask ourselves, what does a web server do? And we covered this before, especially the end of chapter six, when we played around with the simple Python web server and fetching that JSON file and so on using curl and telnet. So a web server basically handles requests from clients. That's it. Now, the way it handles those requests, it could be, well, hey, you make a request, a client makes a request to a web server, it could say, I can fulfill your request. I can fulfill your request, that's reject. Um, it can delegate the request. It can say, hey, you know, I can't do it directly, but there's this other module or something configured to handle this request. And we can probably see the much, much later. It can forward that request and say, hey, you know what? I can't do it, but this other web server can do it. It can redirect you. It can say, you know what? Um, the request you want is not here, but it's at this new URL, but that I also can fulfill, but just that you have to, to make another request to me using the new re um, request. But at the end of the day, regardless of all these, don't even try to remember all these different ways, the end result is that the web server handles requests. And for the most part, what we care about is either it fulfills the request or it rejects the request. We're not gonna think so much about the whole delegating or forwarding or redirecting, those three middle ones. We know what the web server does. What about the client? Well, from the client's perspective, it makes requests. And so the client always initiates the request to the web server. We talk about this. The web server just sits there and clients connect and say, hey, get me something. And that's the one we played with when we use um, you know, our application, our web application. Um, in Angular, we use the HTTP that get method to fetch that JSON file with our task. And we even played around with it using the command line in curl and telnet. I also mentioned that there are a number of other methods, including get, post, update, delete, and a few more, like options, for example, and header. Now, the ones we're going to focus on are these four, get, post, update, and delete. And these are important because get allow you to fetch results from the web server. Or you can imagine if you have an application and the web server delegates a database, then you can go into the database, get some stuff, and return it to the client. Post is, oh, you're going to create new things. So the client is going to send a post request to the web server, and the web server is going to pass it on to something to say, hey, they want to store this thing. Um, update is when you want to make changes to something that's already there. And of course, delete is when you want to remove something. And again, the client, in addition to making a request, of course, when the server handles the request and makes a response, whether it denies it, rejects it, or whatever, the client handles the response, right? However, it was appropriate, but the client is one who handles the response. So we're going to start with a simple web um, server that comes straight out of the Node.js um, usage documentation. And I know it looks a little bit fuzzy here, but what I'm showing are two different ways of doing callbacks. Uh, we have seen callbacks done the way on the right with the function keyword. Um, the other way of doing it is with dropping the function keyword and just putting um, the parameters in parentheses as you would with the function, and then the equal and greater than sign between the parameter and the body of the function. It's still the same thing. Now, this next slide is showing you the actual code, the web server code that we're gonna write in JavaScript. The first line says required HTTP. Don't worry about having to install this module or package. It's already provided by NPM, by Node Ferry. So once you install a node, this is one of those packages, uh, modules that you get there. If you're the impatient type, this is how you'd submit your request using curl. And of course, you'd need another terminal running the application, which you're gonna simply type node space, you know, application name. Now we've done this multiple times. And this is how you'd submit your request using telnet. Um, again, 
um, if you're an impatient type and this is you don't want to watch the, uh, this very long video with me explaining and going over the code in a bit otherwise I'll see you at the end of the video or right in the next video if you're the impatient type for the other ones who are more patient let's continue and delve into running the, the example and talking about the code so I want to start at the node um, JS website so if you go to nodejs.org and depending on your language or whatever it's going to show you here and you went here hopefully to download and install node.js because we need node.js and once you install node.js you'll get npm but regardless of which one you install um, let's go to documentation to docs here and then of course you can choose the documentation and if you just click on this usage and example one of the first examples they have is an example of a web server written in Node.js, which responds with hello world, which means that every time a client connects, it responds with the word hello world. And um, you can see here it's hello world and, you know, followed by a new line. So that's 12 characters. But okay. And um, it's pretty simple. Um, it's JavaScript, remember. And don't worry so much about things that you might have seen, you're now seeing for the first time, like constants, for example. So here's a variable, to, well, it's a constant, but there's this thing called HTTP, and you're going to assign it to require HTTP. Now, the HTTP module or package comes with Node, so that's part of Node, so you don't have to install that separately. Like on the last video, we installed the JSON reader, right? We'd write um, thing. So that comes with Node. There are a couple other ones that come with Node, too. Um, host name, we can create a constant to represent. Um, a constant is like a variable, except it doesn't change. We're not expected to change to the program. So what we're saying here is, I'm not going to ever change what this refers to, or this refers to, or this refers to, to this program. And so this 127.0.01 represents a, the IP address, or I'll call it the loopback address of the machine you're on. So there's a host name. And then the port. And so we're saying, we want to open port 3000 on this server and it just happened on this machine and that's where we're running so that's all just creating like you know um constants and here's requiring that http module and here's where we actually use that http module and on the http module we say create for me a server and i'm going to give it a callback this is a callback and i showed before um how those callback um you know actually um, looks very similar to all the other callbacks we've done where we type function. And so um, this is just saying basically a function that takes two parameters, request and response. And this is the body of that um, callback. So there are two ways you can write this callback. You can write it this um, Java ES6 way, or you can take out these two characters be equal and thing and just stick function in right in front in between these uh, two open parentheses same results but anyway basically says create for me this server I return it as server and anytime a client connects I'm gonna get a request and this represents the request from the client so this contains information about what the client sent me and this is the response this is me the server constructing a response um, to that client. And so one of the things I'm going to do is tell this client the status code of that request in the response is 200 OK. Remember we said that 200 means OK. And we're going to set a header and say the type of data I'm sending you is text plain. And this is the data. Um, response that end says I want to end now finish. I'm finished writing whatever information I need to go back to that client in the response this end call to end represents that and you could have have, have you know like response that right and put more information but this is the only message so we end it and that is it every time a client connects to this server that's what's going to happen it's going to get hello world now how does the server know so we have to kind of run the server let's start listening so to speak in um, network communication so we said server that listen on this port, which is the 3000, on this node, and then um, when you start up, I want you to print out this message. And this message is only going to be printed once, once the server starts up. You can ignore this, actually, and don't even put it in there. 
but it's nice to get a nice little feedback to see that the server started up correctly and now it's actually running and listening on that port. So when you run this, which you run by node, you know, and whatever the file name you put this in, for us it's gonna be um, app01.js and app02.js, but you're gonna see this printed out and now clients can start connecting. So I wanted to show you where the code come from. Now I'm gonna show you our code. So our code, um, you can use whichever ID you want. You can use the ID we've been using all this time, which is, um, you know, um, brackets. Um, and so here is that code. And so the exact same code from before, from that server, uh, from that web page, exact same code. And so um, I can run it by saying node app one.js and uh, it's, let me see, events.js. Uh, Why is it showing uh, a hair and oh, um, this worked fine before. Hmm. Oh, because I have something listening already. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so I have a server running already, yeah, there we go. So let me do this again. So now it tells me that my server is running, okay? And so I put this on one page. My server is running there. I open up another terminal, and now I can make a request to that. I'm gonna use curl to make the request. I'm gonna say HTTP uh, local host and then port 3000. And I see this hello world printed out. And that's I'm gonna do some other tests there and I'm gonna speed it up. So, you know, again, shorten the video time a little bit, but you can always slow down or pause. And what I'm gonna do is use the other example which prints out information about the request itself. So we can see that when we change the method of our request, um, we can actually see that. And so I'm gonna stop the previous one, rerun the new, run the new one, and then you see when I do a default um, this request, it's just a get. And then I see some other, other information from that request that curl added to the request. And I'll do a few more. I'm going to change it to a put and post and then a delete. Um, feel free to play around. You can even try an invalid method and see how our server responds to when you try an invalid method like, uh, I don't know what, create, for example. All right. So that's curl. And play around with the code and check it out. So let me break down um, this using the... Um, telnet for testing. You type telnet space hostname space port. And once you enter, telnet is gonna say things like I'm trying to connect whatever. On the different platforms, it's gonna show you different things. So don't get worried about distracted or confused about what it really show you. At the end, it's gonna give you this last line here. Escape characters, blah, blah, blah. And then you're gonna have a cursor um, at the end where in the next line where you can start typing. You may not actually see the cursor, but it's there. So what you're gonna start off with to submit a request to your um, simple web server is by typing the method. And if you remember from our video back before we finish up um, Angular, we actually played around with using Telnet and submitting a request to Python when we did get and you know the path to get the JSON file and all that. So we kind of played with this before. So you put the method here. For example, I'm using put, but remember, there are several methods which I showed you before. There's put, there's get, there's post, there's delete um, options, and a couple of more, right? But the four we care about, and we're gonna keep using from time to time, is put, post, delete, and get. The others, we're not really gonna worry about those. So I wanna say, I wanna do the method put, and basically I'm saying I'm putting something to this URL slash some slash path, path. Well, it was supposed to be patched, path, path, but I type patch instead, but some patch, let's go with that. And that's your path, your URL path. And this is the version of HTTP you want to speak to the web server. You're saying, hey, this is version I speak. And you enter, and then in the next line, you want to send some headers. We call them request headers which is additional information you're gonna to send to the web server. So you're saying, oh, my user agent is Telnet. 
Cohesion tell net, it's not going to send this error automatically, so we're going to set, set that error. Content type is text plain, which is the type of data I want to send to you. Of course, we're not really going to send data, but usually a put request or post request would have some body data. And then we press enter, and that submits our complete request, which is in this red box here, right? Our complete request is, you know, the line with the put method and blah, 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 and all these header. The headers are optional. If we had just pressed enter twice after putting this first line, it would submit the request with no headers. And you will see that print out when you use the second um, app02.js. It shows you what it got in terms of the path and the method and headers. And so you can see all that. Now, the web server, it responds with this in the green box here. And it responds saying, okay, I'm going to speak HTTP 1.12, and your request, 200, okay. Okay, and like I said, there's these numbers, there's the re uh, response code, and then there's the response like message. And so there's 200 and 500 and 201 and 202 and all these other things. But the 200 generally means everything is all good and onky dory. And so 200, okay. And then um, the content type I'm reply with is text plain. And it says, oh, the date of this response and the time is blah, blah, blah. Connection type keep alive, which you're going to ignore. Content length, which is how long is the stuff I'm sending you? 12 characters. And you could read that and you can see here, you know, hello world. Um, hello itself is five, then there's a space, six, and then world. And then there must be another character at the end there, maybe a new line or something that's in the thing. So it's saying, oh, 12 characters. I'm sending you that. And that's it. That's the end of the response. And you can send more and more requests. After this line, you could have submitted another request. It could have been a post or a put or whatever, or get. It's up to you. Now, the purpose of our simple web service is to show that every single request that come in, we respond back with basically this message, hello world. Ignore the rest of the stuff at the top. We always respond with hello world. But that is just in preparation to show you that at least we get in the request and we respond into it. It gives us a little bit more control than when we were using um, Python. So in the next video, we're going to show how you're going to be able to respond to specific types of requests, which is basically based on either the method or the path. We're going to say, you know, depending on the method, if it's this path, if those two things match some pattern we're looking for, we're going to uh, respond accordingly. So. Anyway, just wanted to basically break down how to use Telnet. Using this video is already a bit long, past 18 minutes. So I'll end it here and say thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you again. Hope you're learning. Hope you're spreading the word. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And let's continue having fun and keep learning. Try this out. Post questions if you have them. Take care. Bye.